Okay, so in today's video, we're going to check out what type of quality you may be able to get with your Zone Star 3D printer. And we're going to compare it against a $10,000 printer used by Unilever, the same factory that produces Lipton Tea and Dove Shampoo. Okay, so let's first take a look at the $10,000 print. This one was printed by Unilever with the $10,000 printer. And we want to look at what type of defects you might be able to notice with your eye and the difference between this one and the other one. So this is the $10,000 printer and the other one's the Zone Star. And uh, personally, I'm a little bit more of a critic on this one than I am on the other one, of course. Naturally being that it's a $10,000 printer and it should almost be flawless in my opinion. All right, so let's look around. I could notice at first hand that this is very smooth surface right here. The lines are very tight. There are almost no defects that you can notice at all on this entire backside of this cartoon character. But if you notice under here on the chin, maybe where they use the support, there is a pretty rough surface. And here on the bottom, it's quite improved. I mean, in comparison to what you're normally able to get, it's really quite good, but it's not perfect. It's by no means flawless. Same with as, as underneath the chin. If you look very closely, behind the ears, or right on the edges of the ears, you can see sort of very small bumps, like a rough sort of shape. And in my opinion, that if you have a $10,000 printer, you should be able to just push the button with, a little, with little to no playing around with it and get a pretty good print. So, that's our $10,000 print. Up next is our Zone Star 3D printer. And just like before, we're gonna try to be a little bit of a critic and kind of point out the defects that we see in each model, just like we did in the other model. So we're gonna try to point out sort of the defects that you can see here in this model done by the Zone Star. Again, a $200 printer, so I'm a little bit less of a critic honestly than I am when I'm talking about a $10,000 printer, but we're gonna go through it just the same and try to find what we see is wrong with this print. Okay, so um, at first glance, on a positive note, it looks pretty good. I'll do a quick spin here so you can see all sides of, of uh, the model. Looks pretty good, right? I mean, there are no holes that go through it because this is hollow. Not bad, right? So um, let's zoom in a little bit closer, see if we can find anything that's a little less noticeable. Now I see here, there's sort of a line, some sort of seam maybe even, here, here, and here. There's an even more noticeable one over here by the nose. Now if you run your finger up its back, you can barely, just barely feel some sort of little bump when you hit that seam. It's still there, but it's... It's not noticeable um, when you touch it, but you can still see it a little bit. All right, so let's go to another point. Um, all right, nothing here on the nose, nothing that's uh, noticeable anyway, nothing different from the other model. So let's go over to the ears. The other model had some sort of bumps on the ears and yeah, this one has teeny, teeny little bump right there on the right hand ear, but I would say it might even be smoother, might even be better than the industrial grade 3D printer. I would say that this actually came out nicer. All right, so let's go underneath here to the chin, because I used a support. I don't know if they used a support on theirs, but I used one here. And um, you can notice that there's a pretty big bump there. All right, so let's go here on the bottom. This is where the side effect really, I mean, this is the worst part of the print right there on the bottom. I would say it didn't stick very well to the base. I would say that the bottom uh, part of this model is by far the worst part of this model, or maybe the biggest defect that it has. But otherwise, it's not that bad. I would say, looking at this, and given the option, would I rather spend another $9,000 or more, or spend only 200, and if I was only printing simple shapes like this, or maybe even a little bit more complex ones, for example, like this was printed, it's got threads. This was printed with the Zone Star as well. I would go with the Zone Star, just because of the price point. And the Zone Star can also print things, for example, like this, which is a nice little tank. 
I got off Thingiverse. And uh, the details on here are really nice. And you can see all the different parts on it. And if you notice, this barrel is really small. I mean, it was printed vertically, and there are no defects here on the sides of the barrel. I was able to print that completely vertical like that. So, um, I'd say that's pretty impressive from a $200 printer. Well, it's up to you guys and what your opinion is, and it depends on what you want to print with it, but if if you have uh, just some basic shapes or you just want to get started with 3D printing, I can really suggest the Zone Star 3D printer. I think that um, it works for me, and I think that if you're doing the similar types of prints as I am, it'll work for you too.